When buying your next new laptop, do you really need to spend hundreds of dollars to increase your internal SSD storage space? Or does it make more sense to save the money, buy a bigger external SSD drive, and run your files off of that? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to be answering. We're going to be running a series of tests to figure out, is an internal SSD actually worth the money, or should you go with a bigger, cheaper external SSD drive? Now it's no secret that storage these days is at a premium, with 4K video being the standard, 8K video on the way, all these cameras with a million megapixels, files are taking up more and more storage space than ever before. Which begs the question, what's the best place to store those files? Now nearly all of the big computer manufacturers out there these days are using a built-in storage option that is non-upgradable, meaning that when you buy your laptop, you need to make the decision on whether you want to pay the money up front for a bigger internal SSD, or, like I said before, save your money, buy a bigger, cheaper one, plug it into the side, and call it a day. So let's just look at MacBooks, for example. The MacBook Airs have a base storage of 256 gigabytes. The MacBook Pros have a base storage of 512 gigabytes, but maybe that's not enough for you. So you start to look at what are the other options out there. So I'm looking at the different options, and then very, very quickly, the base price looks great, but very, very quickly, the price gets way higher than what it's being marketed as, and that's because of the internal storage. So then I had an idea. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I have a two terabyte external drive in my drawer. Can I just buy the base model storage and then plug this thing in and have everything run just as smoothly? Because if so, that's a way cheaper option. And even if I didn't already have a drive, you can buy an external SSD for like half the price and for twice the amount of storage as you can for that internal drive. For instance, the Samsung T7 Shield drive that I have runs $250 for four terabytes of storage. So that's like a quarter of the price per gigabyte if you wanna do it on a per gigabyte basis. And I'm seriously considering doing that. But before that, I wanted to make sure that my workflow wasn't gonna be completely wrecked and my computer just coming to a crawl making me wanna pull my hair out if I still had hair. That's exactly what we're gonna to test today. Does this truly impact your day-to-day -day operations with your standard workflow? Or will you be just fine with an external drive that costs a quarter as much? I'm hoping it's the latter. Now, if you go back five or 10 years, most computers out there would have what's called a hard disk drive or an HDD for short. Now, these were a physical drive with a physical disk that would spin around at various RPMs, depending on if you bought the expensive one or the cheaper one and there'd be a magnetic arm that would go out and read the information on that disk. And you would notice that from the time that you would click on something, there'd be a delay between when the file would actually open. And that delay would be the time for the disk to physically spin around, the arm to read the information, and spit it back out through the CPU and all that. Thankfully, these hard disk drives are a thing of the past, and nearly every computer that you'll buy out there now comes with an SSD or a solid state drive. Now this is a type of storage that does not have any moving parts, and it's a type of flash memory, meaning all of the information is instantly accessible at almost any time. Now the science of how these things work is way over my head, so I'm not even gonna get into that. But all you need to know is that they're way faster, and a perfect example is if you were to boot up your computer, think back 10 years ago, you'd hit that power button on your laptop or your PC or whatever, and maybe a minute or two goes by until your computer is fully up and running, up to speed, and then you can actually get going and doing things. Compare that to today's computers. You hit that power button, and usually within like 10 seconds, maybe 30 at the most, if it's some crazy computer or something, you're up and operating at full speed. Immediately when the operating system pops up, you're good to go, and it's just a perfect example of previously, there'd be a physical disk spinning, like I said, the information would have to get read off that, and now it just gets pulled from the solid state drive at any moment. And that brings us to our tests. So sorry to all you PC users out there, but I'm doing this test on my MacBook Air M1, and one caveat is I am using it connected to my Apple Studio display, so it's not through Thunderbolt, and that may impact the results, but I wanted to do this for me to figure out what my use case would be and I'm not gonna be having this thing plugged into the side of my laptop all the time. I want it hidden, it's gonna be plugged into the back of the studio display, and unfortunately the studio display only has one Thunderbolt port, and that's to actually connect the laptop. So keep that in mind, but 
In any case, I wanted to do three tests for this. The first one is just a very simple run of the Blackmagic Design speed test app. For the second test, I'm gonna be doing a test of how long does it take to create proxies of 4K media for a nine minute long video. And then the third test that I'm gonna do is a simple render of a nine minute 4K video. So let's get into the test. And if I'm being totally honest, I have no idea what to expect here. I'm truly doing this because I wanna figure out if I should be spending the money on a bigger internal SSD or if I can get away with what I have. My initial thought was that it would be way faster to have everything on the internal SSD because pulling information over USB seems like it would take forever. But then I was like, well, wait a minute, once the information's there, then it's not really necessarily having to read anything through USB anymore. So maybe it's kind of a moot point and then I can just use the external SSD for everything. So let's find out, let's get into it. So the first test that we did was the speed test. So on the internal SSD, it ran it a few times. It was averaging about 2,700, 2,800 megabytes per second write and 2,900 megabytes per second read. And then on the external SSD, we had a whopping 42 megabytes per second write and 37 megabytes per second read. Now that is a massive difference in the amount of speed that these things are putting out. But does it actually impact the real world experience on using these things on a day-to-day -day basis. So that brings us to test number two, and that's the proxy media test. So on the internal storage, it took eight minutes and 28 seconds to build proxies of all the media. And on the external storage, it took 13 minutes and 24 seconds. And that's about a 60% increase in the amount of time. And that's not insignificant. Now keep in mind that this is for a nine minute 4K video. If you're one of those people out there who makes much longer videos or does anything with 8K, if you're really crazy, then this delta between the two is just gonna increase the longer your video is. If you make 30, 40, 50 hour long videos, you could be waiting a ton of time for these things to generate. And maybe you don't even use proxies and you're like, well, what the hell does this test have to do with me? Well, you know, that's a fair point. So that brings us to test number three. So test number three was a very simple render of the edit one with all the files stored on the internal SSD and one with all the files stored on the external SSD. So on the internal SSD, the render time was 26 minutes and 14 seconds. And then on the external SSD, the render time was 27 minutes and 18 seconds. Now that's only a minute and four seconds difference. Now that is not nearly the difference that I was expecting, especially considering the results of the other two tests. But virtually on the rendering, I mean, I'm gonna consider that like basically not a difference. One minute on a 27 minute render, you know, what, what does that matter? So what's pretty clear to me after all these tests is that the answer to the question, should you upgrade to the internal SSD or should you save your money and buy the larger, cheaper external SSD? The answer to that question is everybody's favorite answer in the whole freaking world, but it depends. What are you doing on your computer that you actually need the storage? Is it just for long-term storage and archival purposes? Or are you actually using like one terabyte files on a day-to-day -day basis? So me personally, I still don't know what I'm gonna get for my internal storage. Realistically, I'll probably do what I did last time and get one terabyte internal and then get multiple external drives as I need them, two terabyte, four terabyte, whatever it is, just to store stuff for archival purposes. But it is nice to not have to run everything off of that. And then if you take your computer somewhere and you wanna do something, you have to take you know, something to plug in as well. That's a major factor to consider, is just ease of use. But again, you're paying four times as much money per gigabyte to buy it internally than you are to just plug something in. So you're gonna to have to figure out what's worth it for you, but I just wanna do some tests You've seen the results. And if you liked what you see here, then please hit that subscribe button. It really helps, much appreciated. Don't forget that like button too. That's right next to it. But thank you all. See you in the next one. Peace.